Hey everyone, welcome to this video on hand calculations. Today I'm going to be introducing the PDD formalism and I'm just going to introduce the formalism first and uh, I'll post some, some sample uh, example problems in later videos. So we can jump right into the formalism here and this is going to be the general equation for the PDD formalism. So now would be a good time to pause the video and kind of look over all of these terms and uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about what each of them mean in a little bit, but now would be a good time to just you know kind of stare at this equation a little bit and kind of figure out try to figure out what's going on. So here's what all of the different terms mean. So we have DREF, which is your reference dose per monitor unit, which is established during your TG51 calibration. MU is just your number of monitor units. PDD, which is a function of SSD, R, and D, is the percent depth dose for the given SSD or the field size at the surface and whatever depth you're calculating at. F is your Maynard F factor, which is used to convert the PDD from one SSD to another. This is usually equal to one if your setup, uh, setup SSD is equal to the same SSD uh, that was used to measure the PDD. Uh, the, you have the collimator scatter factor here for the collimator defined field size at the isocenter. You have the phantom scatter factor for the block field size projected to the normalization depth. You have your wedge factor, uh, tray factor, you might need an off-axis ratio, and you also have your inverse square correction. So I covered most of these uh, in previous videos, but just, you know, take a while to look at this equation and look at all these terms and, you know, just kind of see what they all represent and try to make sense of it. Now I kind of want to show what we're doing with one of these PDD calcs. So this is the reference condition here. So this is what we established here in TG51. We know that the accelerator is giving one centigrade per monitor unit at this point at the reference depth, the reference field size, and the reference SSD. When we apply a collimator scatter factor, we are increasing that collimator field size and accounting for the uh, difference in dose to the calculation point because of changing that jaw size. And so that's kind of the step that's shown here. And next, when we apply a phantom scatter factor, we are applying a tertiary block, you know, if we have a tertiary block, um, and we are accounting for the different level of the phantom that is irradiated compared to the reference field. And if there is no tertiary blocking here, we would just use the collimator field size. Um, and when we move to a different depth, that's when we're using our PDD. So we're accounting for the attenuation and the scatter as you move uh, deeper in the phantom. And then of course, you know, you could add on all the other factors too, like a tray factor, wedge factor, and you know, you first would have to convert to your correct SSD if you uh, weren't at the calibration SSD. Um, but yeah, you would add all those factors in as well, but this is kind of just a little demonstration showing what we're actually doing when we're using these factors. So when might we need to use something like an inverse square correction? Remember, ISQ stands for our inverse square factor in our PDD dose calculation formalism. And we would need an inverse square factor if the source to calibration distance was different from the distance to D max in our given uh, setup geometry. And so this is <clears throat> kind of a illustration showing what, I'm, what I mean by this. So on the left, you can see our calibration condition. So we calibrate our uh, accelerator at a given SSD, at a given depth, and we know the accelerator is giving one centigrade per monitor unit in this condition, but if we convert uh, this condition to our uh, treatment geometry that we have, uh, we might not be giving one centigrade per MU at the depth of D max here. And remember, the PDD is normalized to D max, so we need to know the reference dose per MU uh, at that point. <clears throat> and so, uh, we need to correct our reference dose per monitor unit to the uh, setup SSD plus the depth of Dmax in order to apply this PDD formalism. So that's kind of a little explanation showing when you might need an inverse square factor. But in most cases, if you're using the PDD formalism, you're likely to be set up to 100 centimeters SSD, which is what our PDD was measured at. So you probably wouldn't need one. But uh, it's important to note that if you apply this formalism to other SSDs, you would need an inverse square correction. And if you're at a different SSD, you'd also need to convert your PDD to the correct SSD using the Maynard factor because the PDD is dependent on what SSD you're at. So you need to account for that as well. 
And that's it for the intro to the PDD formalism, and I will post some example problems in the following videos, so I encourage you to check those out.